uh, God bless you all and uh, hope today's message training is uh, will help you it's very important training um, <coughs> God bless you all and uh, please communicate with me in the leaders group if you have any questions and um, now today the theme is in sermons how to write God's nature, God's grace, and how to live out God's grace. Now, these are points, sections of the message, outline messages, outlines of the parts of the outline, and how to write this in logical points so that people will understand them well and follow and understand and be able to apply. So I help you how to, um, how to find points uh, how to write this in logical points and how to find God's nature and God's grace. How can we explore that more? Uh, as I said before the sermon, I suggest that for now that you have this outline, that you can have this outline that um, first you have the interpretation of the biblical passage and examples of negative and positive examples how people are not following it, how people are not obeying uh, God's teachings and those people who obey God's teachings. Okay, so these are the examples, negative and positive examples. And then God's nature and grace. So what is what are his internal nature that um, that makes him want to bless people uh, as the Bible verse says. So what, what are the internal nature of God that motivates him to, to uh, give us this grace? And what are the, the uh, things he does for us? That is grace. What are the things that he does for us? And then why people don't live out this particular nature of God? So why don't people, for instance, if we talk about uh, having the joy of the Lord, God's nature is He is a joyful God, and His grace is He wants to give us joy. He wants to uh, help us to take care of our negative problems in our lives, so that we will have joy, and He uh, <clears throat> His presence will give us joy, and His teaching will also help us to put down our problems, so that we can have joy. And then why people don't live out this particular nature, the joy of the Lord, why people don't have joy, because many people just look at the problems and, and then they think the problems are too big and so they, they don't have joy. And then reminder and warning. And uh, so if people don't have the joy of the Lord, they don't, they don't have strength. They, they will be uh, in despair. They will have no strength to face the difficulties and they always suffer. And then be believing in Jesus would be like adding some more burdens instead of taking away the burdens. You know, some people say, I already have a lot of burdens and now I believe in Jesus, I have more burdens. So that's not true, that we have less burdens. God can help us. But many people didn't understand that and they know, don't know how to apply it. So they, they have more burdens in their lives. Okay. And then how? How can we have this particular nature of God? How can we have joy? Uh, the, the way is that we, you know, we have a good relationship with God and uh, we remember all the blessings of God and we trust in God and then God's blessing will come to us and when we worship Him and adore Him and put down our problems, then we have joy. Now, now today I'm my uh, I'm not talking about joy, I'm talking about another uh, passage. Isaiah 40, Isaiah 40 uh, verse 28. Okay, now if you can see me, please let me know. Okay. <clears throat> Isaiah 40 verse 28 Have you not heard? Have you not? Have you not known? Have you not heard? 
the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the land, ends of the earth, neither faints nor is weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the weak, and to those who have no might, he increases strength. Even the youths shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. So this passage talks about God giving us strength. Have you not known and not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, that he created the whole world, he neither faints nor is weary. He never faints. He is never so tired that he faints and he's never tired. His understanding is unsearchable. So his wisdom is, uh, has no limit. He gives power to the weak. Anyone who come to him, who needs strength, will come to him and trust in him, will have, have uh, power. And to those who have no might, he increases strength. He'll give us strength. Even the youths, shall faint and be weary. So even young people can faint and have no and and be tired and the young men shall utterly fall. The young men can utterly fall and have no strength at all. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew the strength. But those people who um they trust in the Lord, they wait on the Lord, they pray to him and have a good relationship with Him. They shall renew their strength. They have strength forever. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. So they have wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. So they will run and they will not be tired and they shall walk and not faint. So these verses tell us that God is almighty and He wants to give us strength. He wants to give us power so that in all situations we can have strength. Uh, we will not be like the people of the world who has no source of strength if they lose their hope. The people in the world, if they lose money or lose health, they have no hope at all. But God can give us unlimited hope and power. Okay, I'm waiting to see if uh, the network is it working. Okay, uh, okay. Um, so I'm going to demonstrate how to how to um, in this uh, if we preach about this passage, how can we develop the points? Okay. So the negative examples of people who don't get strength from God. So we want to think about uh, the negative examples of some people they don't have strength. So now we want to refer to the Bible verses. We want to refer to the Bible verses. Isaiah 40, 30, even the youths shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. <clears throat> even young people can lose strength and get tired. Even strong people can get tired. So that's the a fact that many, many young people, they, you know, even when they're young, when they don't take care of themselves and they, when they don't have God, they will have, they will lose strength. No matter how strong they are, there are days that they are very weak. And many Christians get spiritually weak and lost hope and even fall away from God. So many Christians they get spiritual weak and lose, I'm sorry, lose hope and even fall away from God. They become spiritually weak. Many Christians, even though they have all the resource, but they don't trust in God and they don't, they become spiritually weak and they lose hope and they have no hope and they can even fall away from God. And even pastors can be in despair and lose strength. So even pastors, uh, they can be in despair and they lose hope. Even pastors can lose all the strength. <clears throat> so, 
So these are negative examples, okay? And the positive examples are people who get strength from God. In Isaiah 40, 30, those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. So those who wait on the Lord, those who have a good relationship with God and they wait on the Lord, they shall mount up with wings like eagles. They will have wings like eagles and they shall run and not be tired and they shall walk and not faint. And many Christians have continual motivation and strength even when they face great difficulties or persecution. So many Christians have continual motivation and they have continual strength. Even when they are persecuted, when they are put to jail or even killed, they still have strength before they die and they, and they don't fear because they have God. They have the strength of God. And sometimes newly converted Christians, even when they don't know much about the Bible yet, they have the motivation from God and have great motivation to do evangelism. So even some newly converted Christians, sometimes they, they because they're newly converted, the Holy Spirit changed, changes their life and they have a lot of motivation. And then they, they, they're zealous to tell people about Jesus, even though they don't know much about the Bible yet. They, they don't, don't, haven't grown much yet in Jesus. But they have the motivation from God and they have a lot of motivation. They have a lot of strength. So that can happen to, to Christians. Okay, now here we talk about God's nature, how to find points. So God's nature related to his limited strength. How, how can we talk about God's nature from a passage? How can we think in order to find his strength, his nature? So what nature does God have to have in order to have unlimited strength? These are his own qualities. So these are his qualities. So what are God's qualities that he has unlimited strength? First, Isaiah 40 verse 28 says, God neither faints nor is weary. So God never faints and is never tired and uh, he has unlimited strength. He has a lot of strength so he never get tired. And then from the power manifested in the suns of the universe, we know that the Creator has unlimited power. You know, our sun is not the only sun in the universe. There are many suns. There are many suns. This is only one of the suns in the universe. And you know, the sun is so full of power. It has so much fuel, so much power that if, we, if the earth is any closer to the sun, we'll be, all be burned up. So the sun has a lot of power and the universe has many suns. So that means the Creator has unlimited power that He can create such a great universe with so many suns that have so much power. And then see God has the ability to give His strength. God has the ability to give His strength to those who have a good relationship with Him. So He can give us strength. So now how can we think about these points? First, from the Bible verse, what does it say about God's nature? <clears throat> his nature is, are His internal qualities, His inner qualities. So what are the qualities of God? As the Bible verse, the passage says. So here it says that He never neither faints nor is weary. And also from other sources to show this quality of God. Here is from nature. And also, uh, we can talk about, for instance, if we talk about joy, we can talk about Christians who really trust in Jesus and have a good relationship with Jesus. They have joy all the time. They have the joy of the Lord all the time. So that's uh, from, from people, from the work of God, we can see this quality of God. And then God has ability to give His strength. So His nature, He can give to people. So these three points for the, for, for the nature. 
Okay, and then grace. Now this is very important because uh, some of you have difficulty writing about grace. What grace does God have to give us in order to help us in our weakness? So what, what grace does He have to give us? What does He have to do for us? Now these are His actions to bless us. Grace is God's action to bless us. And all these statements should start with God. It should start with God does this, God does this for us. So what grace does God give us uh, in order for us to experience His strength? <clears throat> okay, now first, God accepts that we all have our weaknesses and He forgives our weaknesses when we repent. So this is the first point. Okay, so this here are the points. What are God's grace? First, He accepts us. He, he knows that we are weak. He, he doesn't mind that we are weak. And He forgives our weaknesses when we repent. So, God knows that we are weak. He, he knows that we are weak. We don't have to be strong before we can come to the Lord. Even when we are weak, we come to the Lord and the Lord will um, bless us. So God wants to bless us. Okay? And then, now I want to know if you can see me. Please respond to me. Excuse me. Okay, now, some people have problem thinking about the points to talk about His grace. So here I, I try to help you to think. First, we can talk about that God accepts us and He forgives us our weaknesses. And then He wants to help us with our weaknesses. He wants to. So, related to strength, He wants to give us strength. He desires to. It's very important. Some people think that it's us who want to get strength from God only. It's not just us. It's God who wants to give us strength. He wants us to live in His strength. So God wants us to enjoy His relationship. God does, doesn't make it hard for us to relate to Him. God wants to make it easy for us to follow Him. So God accepts us and He wants to help us. And the Holy Spirit works in our heart and motivates us to realize our insufficiencies and moves in us so that we, we will humble ourselves and hunger for, for Him. So, um, as Christians, we, we cannot change ourselves. It's God who changes us. So the Holy Spirit works in our hearts and motivates us to realize our insufficiencies and moves us moves in us so that we will humble ourselves and hunger for God. So the Holy Spirit works in our heart and He changes our heart to give us motivation so that we know our insufficiencies and move in us so that we will humble ourselves. So He changes us. He changes our heart so that we want to uh, trust in God. We realize that we are weak, we need God. So God works in us. So I'm I'm, go, I'm going step by step to talk about God's grace to help us. And then D, even when we disobey Him, He will continue to work in us in order to change us. So even when we are weak, God doesn't mind 
if we come to Him, even when we sin, we come to Him and ask Him to forgive us, He's very happy to forgive us. He's happy to give us strength. So that is the quality of God. He's very happy to help us. And He can give His mental, spiritual, and physical strength to us miraculously when we have a close relationship with Him. Verse 31 says that He shall renew the strength. So when we trust in Him, He's very happy to give us mental strength so that we have a clear mind and spiritual strength, that we have spiritual strength from God, that we that spiritually we can become strong and physical strength that our body will be physically strong so that uh, when we have a close relationship with Him. Now, these promises will come true when we trust in God. These promises of God working in us and give us strength will not come true until we trust in God and have a close relationship with Him. When we pray to Him and, and uh, enjoy Him and delight in Him, and then He will give us strength. If a person is lazy, he doesn't pray to God, he doesn't pray to God, then God won't give him, give him strength. He cannot receive because there is no connection of Him with God. But when we trust in God and say, I need your strength, I need your strength, and God is very happy to give us His strength. Okay, and then compare to people in the world who lose strength. Now, it's very helpful to compare, to compare people uh, in the world who don't have Jesus. Excuse me for one second. <clears throat> So compared to people in the world, when they don't have Jesus, they lose strength when they, uh, then when they face bankruptcy or serious health problem. When they have any problem, they have no strength. But Christians who have spiritual strength can be rejoicing even in the most difficult times, including being persecuted. <coughs> so as Christians, we have spiritual strength even when the worst happened to us. But people in the world, when they lose money, when they lose their family, when they lose health, they have no hope. They have nothing left because they, all the trust is in money, in the health, in the family, in what they have. And if they lose this, they have no more strength. But as Christians, we have unlimited strength. We have help from God all the time because uh, <clears throat> God's strength is in spite of our difficulties. <coughs> Excuse me. So this, <coughs> now let's go through this again, that God's grace to us, how can we think about these different points? Some people say, I cannot think about these different points, that here uh, with now you can learn from this <coughs> sample, uh, this sample sermon I'm giving now, that you can learn from this and apply to other passages. That first God accepts us, He forgives us, and He wants to help us in whatever area that is. If it's about joy, He wants to give us joy. And then the Holy Spirit will work in our heart. So the next point, so these are some points we can talk about that. First, God accepts us and forgives us, and then He wants to help us. And then He will work in our heart to change us so that we will trust in God, we'll humble ourselves and come to God for help. So He changes our heart first before we can have strength or have joy or have wisdom. And even when we disobey Him, He will continue to work in us in order to change us. So even when we disobey Him, he doesn't give us up. <clears throat> he will continue to work in us in order to change us. So that is the wonderful thing about God. He will continue to work in our lives. He will continue to bless us. He will help us. He will, uh, even when we disobey Him, He will give us chances to repent. So when we disobey Him, the Holy Spirit still works in our heart. That is part of His grace. So He accepts us and forgives us. And He wants to help us, and He works in our hearts so that we humble ourselves and come to Him. And even when we disobey Him, He will continue to work in us in order to change us. So 
So to understand that even when we disobey Him, He still wants to help us. And then E, He will give us that strength. And here, that strength will include mental, spiritual, and physical strength. And then we can compare to non-Christians. When non-Christians lose money and lose health and lose a family, they lose everything. But for Christians, now of course we do, you know, we do get unhappy when we lose these things. But we'll have strength again when we trust in God. That even when we lose a lot of things, some people lose their health, but they continue trusting God and say, even when I don't have good health, I will glorify God. I will trust in God and I will rejoice even when I, have, I don't have good health. That God can use me to glorify His name when, even when I don't have good health. So that is a good thing about Christians, that God will help us even when we lose a lot of things, we still have strength. So, so these are some points that we can talk about God's grace. And then why many Christians don't have strength from God. Many Christians don't have a good relationship with God, they, so they don't have strength. And they rely on themselves. So the problem in themselves, that they rely on themselves. And they can, are not connected to God. And then many Christians want strength just to glorify themselves. They just want to show off how big the church is, how, how, much, how much they can do for God. That is be, being proud and God doesn't like that. So if a, a, a person is proud, God doesn't give him the strength he needs. And then many Christians set their eyes on the problems and are overwhelmed by the problems so they don't have strength. So these are way we think about why many Christians don't have strength from God. And then reminders and warnings. So these are consequences when people disobey God. Some Christians are proud and think that they can do great things with their own strength. God does not like that and they will lose more. They will lose, uh, they will lose strength and everything. So they, they're proud and then uh, they, th you know, they think that they can do great things and God doesn't like that. Then they lose the strength from God and they lose other things that God doesn't, is not happy with them and then God will not bless them. And then some Christians don't spend time with God and don't trust in God's strength. The whole lives are full of weakness and failure. So many Christians don't trust in God. They don't spend time with God. They don't have a good relationship with God. Then they don't have strength. And then when people don't have strength from God, they cannot accomplish anything great. Some people even, wa even waste their lives. So, so this is a reminder of people. What happens if they don't trust in God? And that what will happen? And how to enter 